Hello, everybody out there in fantasy land. We are actually live, I believe, on Facebook and on Zoom. And it is my great pleasure, Nancy, with my, I'm talking smack with my good friend, Nancy Verbreich, all the way from Northeast Pennsylvania. We just spent 20 minutes trying to figure out and cracking this code on how to go from Zoom into Facebook Live. And I had the same problem a couple weeks ago when I talked to my friend, Mariana, who literally lives a couple miles up the road. Now, I'm talking to my friend, Nancy Verbreich, who lives 2,137.5 miles away near my Point hometown. Five. 0.5. You can't forget the 0.5. So here's what the fun deal is all about, folks. I've got to tell you this, and look at that, I found us. So awesome. because, we're, because we're on Zoom, I'm not gonna be able to field questions directly from here. So if any of you watching out there want to ask us any kind of questions, feel free to do so. I'm gonna check my phone and refer to it as we go along. Now I got the system figured out and I figured out what I was doing wrong to set up too, by the way, I'll talk to you about it later. Um, and if you have anything you wanna ask us or chime in with, I'll look at my phone. We're gonna have a little bit of a pause or delay. So just bear with us. And we're going to talk some smack. And I'm super excited to introduce my good friend, Nancy Verbreich. So people come some, sometimes come up to me and they say, K-Rail, you are so motivated. You are so energized. You work out six hours a day. You eat clean. You eat organic. You're vegan. You're this, you're that. Where did you get the motivation? Where do you get the power to continually dig deep and continually move on and, for, and for, force yourself going forward? Where did it all start for you? I'll tell you where it started. It all started back in Northeast Pennsylvania. Humble beginnings in a podunk town called Falls, PA, with an average per capita income of probably 27,000. And I would say the population is about 500 and something. That's where it started. Then in 1996, it all changed. My life changed. I met this woman, Nancy Verbreich. She was my first motivator and inspiration to go down the path of health and fitness that I am now, the caliber I'm at now, the level that I'm at now. It first started when my father passed away in 1992. But when I met this woman, everything changed again. I would say that every single person out there listening or watching right now, you probably can count on one hand, five moments, signature moments in your life, monumental moments that caused great changes for the better in your life. And you can probably think of them in a split second. When she entered my life, that was one of them. Nancy. Likewise. <laughs> well, I really appreciate that. Nancy has been a best friend of mine ever since. And she was doing things that were way ahead of the curve, way before I even knew what the curve even was. I remember going to her house once after a line dancing event, and she offered me some soy milk. And I went, excuse me, soy what? And I had no idea what soy milk was. I had no idea what quinoa was. I had no idea that kale was high in chlorophyll and antioxidants or anything possibly good for you. And I opened her refrigerator and I went like this because there's a lot of foreign things in there. She is the one that got me to dip my toe in the water of organic. She is the one that got me to dip my toe in the water of, of dancing and going beyond my comfort zone. She is the one that informed me that eating fat-free Fig Newtons and Arizona iced tea with zero grams of fat at 12 o'clock at night after line dancing is bad for you. And bad. it causes you to get fat. Yes, it's now, your diet. What did I say? <laughs> she said, it's your diet. And she was it's right. It was You're my diet. diet. Yeah, so long story short, Nancy has had a long history of clean eating, healthy eating, looking into beyond the fourth wall, which I always question people to do, and I always challenge them to do. She used to be a, a world-renowned dance instructor. She created a line dance that has 200 plus steps in it. We're gonna be talking about the effect dancing has on the brain today. We're gonna to talk about the aspect, the, the, the effect it has on human connection and keeping your mind happy and keeping your mood up. We're gonna talk about community when it comes to dancing. We're also gonna talk about the fact that she started out as a fitness instructor, how ironic that is. And now all these years later, she's circling back to being a fitness instructor again, to being a trainer, and she's incorporating all of these variables that she's collected over the years as well. So Nancy, sorry for rambling on so long, but I had a lot of int introductions to do. And I think it's only fitting that nice. I wear my cowboy hat today. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that the original one? It's the original one, 1996, Oh my baby. gosh, <laughs> that's awesome. Great to I, see. I might be a huge fan of Social Distortion and the Ramones and the Sex Pistols and Operation Ivy and Rancid, but I am a cowboy at heart. So, Nancy Verbreich, welcome to the K-Rail Show. We're gonna call this Wellness Wednesday. It's Wednesday, why not, right? Right, absolutely. Tell me something. 
that these people need to know about your background? About my background? Well, I think it covered a lot of it, pretty extensive. Um, you know, it started out with um, me being so unhealthy, that part of me that wanted to change. And uh, I, I, I was doing the same thing you do, just grabbing for things, finding places to get myself well. Mm -hmm. And I uh, had some great teachers. Uh, one of them, Vince Bruss, taught at the University of Scranton. Everything Natural, both of us worked there. That oh, was yeah. a plan, uh, of such wonderful information. We constantly had workshops and things that introduced us to supplements and all of that. So that all was a big part of my life and it played into my wellness today. And then circling back around, you're the credit that I, I kept watching you and I kept saying, you know, I want to get back to, back to me, back to where I was and back to feeling, feeling good about feeling good about myself. So I started watching you again and you were a great inspiration. So that thing I always say, may the circle be unbroken. Here we are again, the circle, we're, we're right in that circle again. So it's so great that we wow. can do that for all this information with people. How ironic is that? that you were kind of an inspiration that, that leveraged me going the direction I did. And all these years have gone by and I got absolutely more than, I got neck deep and all that, all of the, the health and the fitness and organic and fit, the whole shebang, all these years. And then you kind of strayed a little bit away. And then you're telling me that it all came back around where you, you kind of looked at me as, as the figure to get you back in. And yes. I am very humbled by you saying that, first of all. And secondly, it really shows how the non-discriminatory factor works in life where you never know who's going to help or who's not going to help or who's going to be on board. And you have to just be completely open and surrender to everything. And it's like, we all have something to contribute to this world and this earth. And you never know when you're contributing. And you telling that to me, when you told me that a little while ago, I was like, really? I had no idea I was having any impact on you whatsoever. And then like, you're telling me, oh yeah, you you like have this massive impact on me. So you just never know. And you have to be open to everything and you have to be able to accept yourself for who you are in the current moment that you're in. And right now is a perfect example of that. This time of this, not this time of year, this Corona season, I'm calling it the season. Now I think everything comes in seasons. People come in seasons, seasons change, but I mean, it snowed this morning. So it's April 15th and I had no problem with the snow. I, ran, I went for an awesome run this morning. It was fantastic. I, I love running in the snow, just the feeling of the snow hitting me in the face and cooling me down. And like my hands were a little cold, but that was about it but it's like so serene and quiet and you can just like literally everything looks like, looks like it's going in slow motion. The flakes are just right. coming down and you're just like, I feel like a $6 million man. I'm just waiting for that noise to go as I'm running. And it, right. it's absolutely magnet. It's, it's amazing. So putting out good chi always comes back and helps you in the end. So you had a lot of good chi to put out back in the day. And I'll never forget the time we went to, was it World's End State Park when you first introduced yeah. me to Kima? Yeah. I believe it was around 19... No, I think that was, I think it was 2000. It was like 2000, maybe. I'm sitting there at a table and you put this big bowl of something on the table with red onions and peppers and all these colorful, this big colorful arrangement. And I'm like, what is that stuff? And you're like, it's quinoa. And I was like, quinoa? What the heck is quinoa? I've never even heard of that before. My mother never pronounced it right. Yeah. That, that it, stuff. Yeah. How'd you pronounce it? Quino? Yeah. yeah. Probably. Something <laughs> like that. People quinoa. I want to get some of that quinoa stuff, k -Rail. You know what that is? And I'm like, um, yeah, I know what it is. It's actually pronounced quinoa. Oh, well, I'm thinking again, some quinoa and, uh, and some kettle balls. That's what people tell me a lot. I'm like, um, it's a kettle bell and it's quinoa. Thanks for the clarification. Thanks for stopping by. But, but anyway, the, educa the education factor was there that, again, offering something that we had to each other that helped our lives, helped our wellness. Exactly. And there was no, there's no judgment. There's no anything. You're not a dance instructor. I'm not a fitness guy. I wasn't a carpenter then. I wasn't anything. It was two people sat down. You made this batch of quinoa. And I said, what's quinoa? I never heard of it. You said, oh, it's this grain. And I made it with blah, 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 blah. You didn't tell me about it. quinoa is a gluten-free seed that's technically a seed, but called it often mis misconcepted as a grain, but it's actually a seed and it's got all the amino acids in it. So it's a good source of protein for vegans and blah, blah. You didn't give me all the rambling on. You just said, it's quinoa and it's a grain and blah, blah, blah. I tasted it and I was like, how have I never heard of this before? And I loved it without knowing that it was going to be a staple in my diet several years down the road. Right. And then I started digging. Then when I started digging, in, digging into like the medicinal effects of food and how food can be thy medicine, much like Hippocrates said a bazillion years ago, I'm like, oh, this quinoa stuff that Nancy introduced me to a while ago is a powerhouse food, especially if you're vegan because it has all these essential amino acids represented in it. And I'm like, 
I can't say that about rice or millet or any one of these other grains. So I was hooked. But that's my, that's my quinoa story, and that's how I got into quinoa. Now, I want to talk about what you talked to me about yesterday, about your, you had a little bit of social anxiety, I believe is the word you used. And if you didn't use that word, it's a word that I often use, and I'm going to use it right now. When you started teaching classes down at the University of Scranton years ago, I want you to go back, and I want you to tell, I want you to tell me that story again. When we talked about using. Okay. Um, so I, I was very awkward talking in front of a crowd, mm -hmm. uh, talking in, in more of maybe two or three people at a time. And I was thrown into this situation where I was teaching aerobics and my mentor at the time, Vince Bruss, I keep going back to him, but he was just, he was that push. And he said, you know, and I loved it. I, I knew when I walked in that room and I saw this going on, the passion for it, that I had to do it. It was going to be my turning point. Didn't know it at the time it was my turning point, but it was leading me that way. So I would physically get ill prior to the class because I was so um, social anxiety, totally in front of a class and just, I would review everything that I had to talk about and I'd look at it and go over and over and over it before I could even speak. Okay. And I pushed through it. And so, yeah, that social anxiety was a huge thing. And at that time, I knew nothing about diet and I would eat like big brand muffins and orange juice and <laughs> totally crap out, totally. Wow. So that on top of everything, like I wasn't um, nourishing myself and all of that, the brain power, all of that came into it too. So that was the, the learning curve for me then. I was extremely getting fit. I was teaching like 12 classes a week, but back to it, that social anxiety was crippling for me. Wow. Um, yeah, totally crippling for a while. I was just, you know, I didn't, I grew up in a small town. I was just myself and I didn't, I was in front of crowds it was just my mom and dad and me and my brother a little bit here and there and so yeah that social anxiety was a big part of my life that I think a lot of people don't know about and, and along with the unhealthy lifestyle I had prior everything okay so, okay, yeah. so when I first met you and I first came uh oh you just disappeared you there oh there you are I am okay holy cow you totally disappeared I was like uh oh I thought your phone went croaked on us or something so do I look sketchy I'm looking at my phone to see how sketchy I look with my cowboy hat on. If y'all think right. I look too sketchy, do I look sketchy or no? Not at all. Okay. If I don't look sketchy, I'm going to keep it on. If I look sketchy, the hat's going. I'm going to move you over here to keep us plugged in. Okay. Sounds good. You keep so, talking. When I first came onto the scene, when I started getting into country line dancing back in the day, yes, I, I, I would like to go on the record as saying I'm a pretty, I wouldn't say highly qualified line dancer, but I can hold my own on the dance floor. And especially with um, East East Coast Swing. That was my jam. Oh, so, awesome. You were great, Kev. It was great. Well, I appreciate it. We had so much fun back then in the day. And what I, the, the whole aspect, back then I didn't care about anything. Back then it was just like a bunch of people having a good time, line dancing, swinging, and all that kind of stuff. Now I look back at it with all the lessons I've learned through life and all of the research I've done and all the practicing I've done on brain function and all these other things. And there were so many elements going on back then that I see now that I didn't see then that I want to talk about now. So. First of all, let's talk about community, especially because the coronavirus has struck the whole world by storm. Everyone is quarantined, no one's allowed to leave, and with social distancing, people wearing masks and gloves and hats and shirts on backwards and all kinds of crazy things. So community was number one. We'd walk in the door there and you'd just feel this uplifting feeling. Your shoulders would just get broad and you'd smile and you'd see people. And you probably had 10 hugs before you even got to the dance floor when we went to that country line dancing at Shadowbrook Resort in Tunkhannock, Pennsylvania, in case any of you ever get down out there. Nowadays, it's way different. However, human connection, I, I say it all the time, always aim for eight hugs for eight seconds every day of the week. Now, we weren't hugging people for eight seconds each, but I'm telling you, we'd walk in there and like, you just eventually evolve into this, this bubble of close-knit friends that you make because you have a common interest. It's like me going to a Dallas Cowboys football game, sitting in the stands with other people who are wearing Cowboys jerseys, and instantly you have a connection with them because you've all been Cowboy fans your whole life. So you can talk to them for hours because you, you talk about history and stats and like Jason Garrett, the, quarter, the coach being fired and whatever. Country line dancing to me was very much like that. You walk in and you get to know people slowly but surely. And before you know it, it became like this huge family. And you're just hugging everybody. And you get easily eight, ten hugs in a matter of minutes when you got there. And it's like instantly your energy just started building. Then you hit the dance floor and you got to focus 100%. You would give a free lesson at like 7 o'clock 
and you'd have all these songs playing before. And everyone would flock out there, and we're all trying to learn the, the steps. Then you've got the cross-body patterns to think about, which back then, right. again, I didn't give a damn. I had a Jack and Coke in one hand, and I was dancing in the other hand. But in the big <laughs> picture, dancing, especially line dancing, there's so much mental recruitment involved with that, it's not even funny. The, 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 the um, Sweetheart Shottish, I was watching a video on YouTube last night to rehash it in my head. It's all cross-body patterns. You're swinging your partner this way. You're going this way. You're doing a cross-body pattern on your legs, your arms. You're swinging your arms around like this. All that stuff, people, is absolute gold mine for your brain. That is a biohack. That reverses the aging process. And back then, right. again, I didn't give a damn. I just out there dancing. I was looking for chicks. But in the big picture, it is so critically important for the brain. It's not even funny. And I absolutely believe you are where you are. How, if you don't mind me asking, can you tell them everyone your age? Do you mind? Not at all. I'm 59. Nancy is 59, and she's more fit than a, a lot of 21-year-olds I know. Mentally and physically, and her posture is absolutely perfect, and she's ripped for her age. And a lot of that reason why is because her attitude is so good, and it always has been. So she was doing dancing, cross-body patterns. She was doing fitness classes, cross-body patterns, exercise. She was eating clean, and she had a good attitude, and she was positive, and she was motivating other people. That is a recipe for reversing the aging process. Now, what do you think? about everything that I just said. I want, you said something earlier about your bad eating habits. So you once had a span of time, and interestingly, a lot of people are in this boat, and I was one of them when you used to yell at me because I had to change my diet, and I'm like, wait, I can't have TCBY? That's <laughs> frozen yogurt, <laughs> zero fat. What's wrong with that? Good so for you. You gave me what I call, out on the streets, please pardon my French, a mulabanda bitch slap. That's what you did. And then I realized <laughs> what I was doing wrong, and I made my adjustments. So you also can't, so a lot of people in positions like mine and yours, we go through these stages in life where we hit the wall or, or we just like, we flatline and, and we're like, a lot of people have been alcoholics, they've been drug addicts, or they've been like really bad unhealthy eaters and partiers. And now all these years later, they're in a position more like where we're at right now, peak of health and fitness. And you don't know everyone's story. You know, you know, those people, the influencers you see on, on Instagram and, and YouTube and Facebook that have like millions of followers that are like in a fitness industry. You don't know their whole story until you dig deeper or actually talk to them. And a lot of them have the same background that we have. So I want you to talk about your darkest days and what, how did you go from your darkest days to your clean days? What was like the transition into that? And, and how did, how'd you get there? And by the way, this is kombucha. It's not whiskey. It's a whiskey flask, but it's kombucha. Go ahead. Cheers. Tea. Cheers. Um, well, I lived a life of, of doing all those things that weren't feeding my, feeding my, feeding my soul in a way, but not feeding my temple, feeding my body. And, um, I just did a talk the other week and, and talked about, I got sick and tired of waking up sick and tired. Okay. And, and especially in these times, it's, it's easier to keep your well full instead of trying to start to scramble to fill your well up now, which for a lot of people, yes, you know, do it. Anything you can do to make yourself better now, um, keeping that temple, keeping that well full. But back to what I used to do, um, I was a partier and I was actually, I remember the day that I went to the aerobic class, I got in the car with my boyfriend and he was having a cigarette and oh I was like, yeah, I'm so done. I'm so done with this. I just can't live this, that lifestyle. And I'm not condemning or judging at all by any, but I knew for me it wasn't working anymore. And I was sick and tired of waking up, sick and tired. Um, I, I, drugs and alcohol, they abused me. I, I, don't, I don't like to say that I abused them. They, they abused me. My body was tired and I just felt awful. So, mm -hmm. and then that's when I got the job at Everything Natural. That's when I started to teach at the University of Scranton and things started to turn around for me, but I was still eating unhealthy, thinking that it was healthy. So then when I met you and I were working out like a fiend and you were like, I, I don't get it. I'm Kev, it's your I'm diet. Not, and, I'm not getting the results and, and, I want. I was not getting the results and I'm not feeling in that lethargicness and that crave, you know, that crave was a big thing. The sugar, the crave is a big deal yeah. and the inflammation in the body. So um, years later, and then I was involved in an accident and I had all this inflammation in my body and it was just like, I'm still doing all this stuff, but I still hadn't got to the point where I am now with the inflammation thing. So I cut a lot of the sugars out and just, I'm back to where I was. And, and I'm, I feel so much stronger now than I have in a long time and, uh, diet, exercise, cut out the inflammation, take care of what takes care of you. 
Mm -hmm. be your best self and set realistic goals. That was another big thing. I would set this plateau like here and then not reach that and just fall out. So I, I encourage a lot of women, wherever that, or men, wherever you're at, to start at a good, healthy place and go from there, wherever start, that is, right start, now. Start small and grow tall. That's what we call it. Yep, yep, definitely. So I want to talk about Twister Alley. Um, would you say it's safe? To, would, is it safe to say that that is like your crowning achievement when it comes to your dance background? So just a little background, everybody. I was fortunate enough and I feel honored. Is that your, oh, it's your clock. Is that your clock banging? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what's going on? We have another earthquake. What's going on here? So I had the privilege of being on dance, Nancy's dance team back in 1997. It was Memorial Day weekend of 1997 because I have a photographic memory, not because I'm a creepo. We went to North Carolina. There was an all weekend um, country line dancing workshop going on. Now, granted, back in the mid, I would say 93, is kind of when the big country line dancing season occurred. And it went all the way up until about 2000, and then it kind of started drifting off. And it still exists nowadays, but it's not as big as it once was. But in 97, it was like at its peak, and there was a, a three day workshop down there with all of these big time line dancing instructors coming in. Sp Perry Spence was there. Who else? Yes. Was there? Remember? Uh, Max, oh. Max something. Uh, Mac, Max Perry, Max Perry. Uh, Anna, Anna, there, there was a lot of people, but oh, yeah, right. and it was a couples, couples workshop. Again, we talked about cross body patterns, but also getting couples to dance together. Yes. So that was huge. And getting women onto the floor that didn't have a dance partner. Uh, Cause back in the day, you know, even now it's like, get on the dance floor. Just, just movement is so important just to move and finding your passion, what that is. For me, walking on a treadmill, oh my gosh, give me a butter knife. I, I couldn't do that. You know what I mean? Give me a it's rusty just, butter knife. Yeah, I mean, just, I couldn't do that. It's just not my thing, but there's so many things out there that will fuel your passion to keep moving. And that for me at the time was, and I still love to dance, but exercise, any movement is just wonderful. So, and you were great and you're still great well, at that. You, I appreciate it. It was great to be on the I, team. I, we had I, fun. Oh, it was so much fun. And, and like the whole aspect was there. We're well represented. We had, we had community. We were all good friends. We all had positive chi. We, we just laughed all the time. And then when we hit the oh. dance floor, it was like, boom, we like snap a finger. You tap, someone tapped their heel and we're like right in alignment and off we go. And this dance yeah. that Nancy created, I want to tell you all about this because I think this is important for you all to know. People ask me sometimes like, oh my God, that, that Indian club stuff you do with you're juggling those, Indian, those, those bowling pins looks so amazing. It's like an art form. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much it is. And I'm like, it takes metric hours of practice to get to where I'm at with those Indian clubs. And I'm like, I akin that to playing an instrument or dancing, dance steps. Because the, the Twister Alley that you've created is an absolute masterpiece. It is this, Thank you. The song, the song is called Twister Alley by, um, who's the band that sings that? It's, it's by Twister Alley and it's called Twister. Twister, okay. So Nancy developed this dance that has 200, I wanna say 237 steps. She probably doesn't even remember, but I know it's 230 plus steps. Yes, 230. That means there's like, for a five minute song, there's like nothing repeated. It's like, you gotta learn it in, in fragments and pieces. And we spent weeks practicing up at Shadowbrook before we went down there because we had to represent in front of like, I don't know how many people were there, 500 or something like that. Because she was asked to bring her dance team down to do this dance and she asked me to be part of it. And I was very honored to do that. And I knew I had to get my game on. And I had to like learn it from scratch at that point. I didn't even know, the, I didn't know it by heart at that point. And it was super hard for me. And again, when I think back on that moment, it was basically, I just, I took it in pieces and layers. And that's how she did it. She laid it out and we just went piece by piece. And then we just keep, we kept adding a piece, adding a piece, adding a piece until we got to the very end. So when I teach Indian clubs, it's very similar to that whole aspect of learning a complicated dance move or playing a, an instrument and learning something complicated. You learn the basic move first, and then you add to it and you add to it and you go all the way to here, all the way to here, practice, practice. Then you add one more thing to it all the way to here, add another one, add another one. And what happens is your brain just starts going. It's like five squirrels running on wheels inside your brain at the same time. So the, the amount of neurological load involved with that dance is absolutely unbelievable. It's off the charts. So my question to you is I, up until the coronavirus, you were still teaching line dancing here and there at Crickside, I believe. Yeah. In some yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Were you still pulling those, 
those old dances out of the archives, like the Twister Alleys and the, <clears throat> the Fevers and the Watermelon Crawls and the Calientes and all those. We did, yeah, we did, yeah. definitely. And then uh, I just recently taught on a cruise and you know, my passion has always been trying to get couples together and teach couples dancing. But again, back to, I think what we're talking about more than anything is how important movement is and how important is the biohack. And, and if you could sum up biohack, because I've had a lot of people say, what, what is this biohack thing? Like, you know, and, and just sum it up for me. I'm question for you just to say, this is what biohacking is. This is what we do. Well, it's Your, the yeah. answer. The answer to that question is kind of in the word itself. So right. whenever, you're, whenever you hack something, whenever you hear, all right, well, there's, there's, two, there's two ways of looking at the word hack. In my opinion, there are some people out there on social media who are hacks, meaning they're, they're nitwits. They think they know everything and they know nothing, or they think they know they're an expert in one field because they read a study on it. And then they create a big whiteboard behind them and they put notes all over the place and they act like they're a professional and they have a good marketing team who goes and gets them a million followers. That's a hack. Someone who acts like they, they, rep, they misrepresent themselves. That's the bad hack. Now, the good, the good, hack, hack. Is this. The good hack is this. Another interpretation of a hack is a, tr a trade secret or a tip or a trick to get yourself in a better position quicker than you would if you went down a conventional road. So for example, drinking kombucha is a hack in my opinion because it's loaded with probiotics. So it's gonna help your gut health. And if you improve your gut health, it's gonna improve everything else because you're gonna be able to digest food better. You're gonna break down nutrients and you're gonna have more energy levels. You're gonna build more muscle. You're gonna be able to dance better and smoother. You're gonna have better brain function, more focus. Your hormones are gonna be more balanced. Your sexual function is gonna go through the roof. So anything you can do to fix your gut health is a hack or a biohack. So basically you're hacking your body's biology. So your body has a natural tendency to do certain things. Along with the aging process, certain things start to decline. Your muscle mass starts to decline, bone strength, mental strength, eyesight, ear, you know, hearing, all these different things start to decline. So if you can biohack your system and pop those things back into attention again and may improve on all those, then you've just did a biohack. So basically it's a way to do things like reverse the aging process, maintain lean muscle mass in your, in your older age, maintain brain function, maintain sexual function, but not just maintain it, but maintain it to a level that's like higher than average or higher than normal. So that's kind of what biohacking is. Right. It's, hard to, it's hard to come up with like a one-liner to describe what biohacking is. It's a little too scientific to do that. that. that explains it all, you know, just to, yeah. so people have an understanding that at any age you can be the best, your best self and anybody, anybody, yeah. and anybody that's what i try to encourage girls too because back in the day when i taught at the university of scranton and all these girls were young and they um they, their body fat was off the charts yeah. and they had no energy and they tried to restrict their diets and they you know all the things that they did back in the day to try to get that figure but it wasn't it wasn't health it wasn't wellness motivated it was more self image motivated yeah so i got that also was a turning point for me to take care of the inside out and i had gut issues and that's when i met donna flamante and oh, yeah, worked at the awesome. way, yeah the way really uh wellness and i did lymphatic massage therapy there and all of that that combined into all of what i do and then also healing myself by healing other people you heal yourselves because you see you know what works and what doesn't work but gut health was huge it's still huge i mean i, I work at that the probiotics and you know start there start on the inside first and uh get to where you're at so fitness over 40 fitness over 50 fitness here coming up on 60. fitness oh. for life fitness for life fitness you get the a. Life. absolutely i mean everything you're saying um reassures my point that just throw age out the window throw caution to the wind what goes on up here is the most important thing because this controls everything and there's a huge amount of Biofeedback that goes from the gut to the brain, the gut brain access, it's called. So, you treat this good on the inside and out, your gut, then you've got it made in the shade, baby. That's it. I mean, that's what I talked to my friend Gut Babe about a week and a half ago. She's, she's an expert on that stuff. And um, it's just like, talk, it's like talking into a mirror when I hear her talking because I've been saying it forever. And, and again, this is stuff that I came across after my years of, of eating Fig Newtons at 12 o'clock at night for line dancing and like eating late at night. Oh my God, all those late night eating fests we, we did back in the day. Oh uh, my God, Nancy. Denny's and like, we'd go to Wilkes, Wilkes Barre and different towns to these country line dancing events. 12 o'clock would come, we'd go right to like some place and we'd be having pancakes and sausage and bacon and eggs and oh my God. It's amazing. We, if we didn't do all that dancing, we'd be huge. <laughs> I can tell right, you right oh, sure. 
it, it definitely we fed ourselves oh. different kind of fuel then and you know what and it's okay for some people that whoever whatever you want to do that feeds your soul feeds you but we're just giving examples of what worked for us and what still works for us yeah right and little things to get you there and again talking back to the dance the dance is so important and still movement is key movement is key something that you're passionate about and we were passionate about it we loved it we still do yeah so. and that's a good point too coming from some people are often intimidated when I walk into a room or when I start talking because they think I'm like this, this high intensity military fitness guy that like works out six hours a day. All of that might be true, but you made a really good point when you said, do what you love and do what you feel passionate about. That is what fuels my passion in my life. That is why I do two workouts a day, three workouts a day. I'll work out an hour and a half. I'll go to the park. I'll swing any clubs for an hour. I'll go for a hike over on PC Hill. It's because that makes me feel good. That's what I need to um medicate my soul and my body it doesn't right. have to be you don't have you do not have to do what i do you do not have to do what nancy does you don't have to be ripped at 59 you don't have to be ripped at 50, 47 what you need to do is you need to connect the dots on what makes you happy and you passionate you said it really well and you i know for a fact because i came from the same town you do you have a whole different landscape going on out there than i've got here it's easier for me to talk to certain people and, and motivate them in a certain direction and you have a whole different demographic out there. When I come back home to PA anymore, I'm always on edge. I'm like, I'm real anxious. I'm nervous. And I'm like, I feel like I, I kind of feel like I'm being looked at or like people looking out the corner eye at me because maybe I'm, I'm a little too uh, exogenous or too high tone for people and they're not going to understand it. But you, you live there. So you, you're coming from a different angles. So for, to add a little bit more to what you were saying, if, if walking is all you got and that's all you need to medicate your soul, then go for the walk. Go for the walk 30 minutes a day. If that's going to, if that's going to do it for you, great. If that's going to help you clean your diet up, if your diet is out of control, if you're smoking too many cigarettes or drinking too much whiskey at night, I don't drink too much. I do have a little bit here and there. Shh, you didn't hear that from me. But <laughs> That's okay. I mean, live like okay. so me too. I'm a plethora of like having a good time. I love it. Anything to feed our souls, you know, but the other part of it that's keeping ourselves going to feel, especially now, and I think it's so crucial and in this time and any time like i said it's easier to stay well than it is to get well easier to stay well yes than to get well i know i've been there i've been on the couch i've been through depression i've been through all of this stuff you know like all these things to get to the point of wellness that we're at now and do i always hit the mark absolutely not so when i'm not hitting that mark i i go to your page or i go to those things that motivate me, get yeah. me on back track. And sometimes we don't need to be on track. Sometimes we just need to be on the couch, especially going through all this stuff. It's a lot of stressful time. But I think now that the initial shock is over and the initial, not shock, it's all that we're going through is like, what am I gonna do to take better care of ourselves? What are we gonna do to make a difference today that's gonna affect tomorrow and the, and the years to come? And, and, and getting hit with this like, oh my gosh, here we are. Yeah. And the, who would ever think? Who would ever think? I know, right? Ne never in a million years would you think it. it and it came about so fast it was just like it right. came from out of nowhere it's like you're sitting here looking out the window admiring the sunset and your health starts shaking and you have like a, a category five um earthquake right. or a richter 7.2 richter scale her earthquake out of nowhere that's kind of what it felt like but it just lingered on for the past six five weeks or however long it's been now six weeks i guess now or something like that and the adaptation phase is is sort of over with i would say and now people are like, what's next? And what are we going to do? And it's like, I mean, although they're like making projections, there really is no end in sight, to be honest with you. I don't really see a solid date. We're like, oh yeah, May 1st, we're good to go. Everybody just go right back outside. I don't really see that happening. I don't really know how long this is going to last or what's going to happen next. But I do know this. I don't watch the news. I don't watch the news on the computer. I don't look up speeches on YouTube. I don't do anything. I just sit back and I let things come to me. And all the information that I need, I need personally just appears because I'm in 100% surrender right now. I'm more at peace now than I've ever been in my life. I got rid of some toxic people recently the past month and every day just keeps getting better. And, and that's another thing, people, you've got to clear your plate of all the toxicity. If, if someone is giving you news every day that you don't like and it's causing you sleeplessness, if it's causing you anxiety or depression and they, they continually contribute bad juju to your life, you've got to get rid of them. And I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And I don't care if they're friends, family members, coworkers, whatever. I've been down this road so many times, all the way back to like my early 20s when I first met Nancy. And it works like magic. 
You get rid of all the toxic people and all the toxic things. Where do you see what happens? Magic will happen. It will appear right before your very eyes. And one thing I don't want any of you to do is to just sit back and watch the news all day. Don't sit back and watch CNN. Don't, don't sit back and watch your local news. We already know what the bad news is. We know. What more, what more shoveling of crap down your throat do you need to know how bad a situation is? You know how bad it is. So shift your focus to the good. Just like Nancy said, what can I do today that's going to- um, Enhance my quality of life. What's that? What one thing can I do today to enhance my quality of life? And those, and of others. I always throw and of others too. And, and another thing too that if I can add this in there that um, sometimes we are around people that are toxic or we have certain things that for our job situations or, you know, that we can't really step away from or in a friend's zone and there's certain people, there's things that you can do to step away from or the serenity prayer. Help me to help myself. How am I going to uh, accept the things I cannot change? And how are those things going to affect me in, in a positive way or, or a negative way if we choose to do that? So when we are subjected to whatever, you know, how am, I, how am I going to react? How am I going to act? How am I going to act on this? So the, a lot of times our first thing is reaction, reaction, reaction. And it's just, well, you know, we can't change the way other people are. We can change the way that we are. Mm -hmm. And that keeps that positive chi going. And that's what, you know, has kept me, kept me here, kept me there, kept me where we're at. That's awesome. And I have to ask you this question. What are your thoughts on cucumber water? Oh. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me take a sip of water. Go ahead. So, I think you should elaborate on that. But um, the, things right, that, well, the things that people might not think that might work for other people but work for us so we're cucumber water fans we're lemon in our water fans and do i like to go out and have a good time absolutely so you got to do what's right for you and, and talking again what those people what other people may think or not think we know that we're doing well for us and maybe that good chi can pass on to somebody else to make it good for them too right yeah absolutely yeah. well i'm going to tell you my cucumber water story because i need to get this off my chest i Lemons and limes are cool. I sometimes use them in my kombucha blends, but I don't like lemon in my water. So I adopted this habit. Body, alkaline. Okay. Alkaline for the body. And we have to do another talk about that too, about all those little things that people want to know, like what to take, what to drink, what to eat, what to, you know, another time maybe we can yeah, elaborate yeah. all this along yeah. with the cross body patterns. Well, that's all, this, all that stuff are, are awesome biohacks, but I don't yes. simply like lemon or lime in my water because it tastes too bitey. It's too pungent. It's too um, sour for my taste. Right. And I adopted putting cucumber slices in my water way back when. I don't know when a few years ago. And um, I just think it's more smooth and it tastes delicious. So both of those reasons, both of those things going into your water, it's not there just for, for fancy dress. The original reason why they put lemon in water was to help alkaline the water, to raise the alkalinity of it right. as, as a way to improve your, your pH level in your body. So the rule of thumb is disease fails to exist in an alkaline body. So if right. you put lemon in your water to, to increase the pH level of that, to increase your pH level, I say, go for it. But I don't like the, the flavor of lemon. So I started using cucumber. Last year, I go back to Pennsylvania. I, go, I, go, I actually went to the East Coast, did a bunch of workshops with a couple of friends of mine. And then I came back to PA. And then I went and taught a class at this place called Endless Mountain Hot Yoga. And then Nancy- and Another Sarah, great husband, Yeah. We go for dinner at this place up the road. I asked for cucumber water and I got this blank stare. Like the, the, the woman was like just writing orders down. And all of a sudden I go, can I have some cucumber in my water? And I, I got this. <laughs> and then she You're... wrote this and looked down and looked back at me. I'm like, cucumber. Like, do you have cucumber here? I'm like, I see this. It says salad with cucumber. I'm like, you must have cucumber. She's like, um, let me ask the chefs. So she goes in the back and then she comes out with a glass with all this chopped up cucumber. I've specifically said slices because I don't want little, little chunks of cucumber hitting me in the face when I'm drinking water. <laughs> so she brings out this cup with chopped up cucumber in it. And she's like, I had to say it three times to the chef because he's like, oh, we got one of those, huh? And I was like, yeah. one of what? So <laughs> I, got, um, I got fit shamed, basically is what I'm getting at. So you've got fat shaming, which everyone talks about, but no one ever talks about fit shaming. So I came back there 
expecting to have a nice cold glass of cucumber water. And instead I got fit shamed. And then to top it all off, the owner comes out and she starts talking to us and she was super cool. Then her son comes out and he was a little rambunctious. I'm not mentioning names of places in case someone's watching. And next thing you know, I don't even know how it happened, but I'm talking to Nancy and Charlie and all of a sudden the kid just sticks his fingers right in my cucumber water. I think I asked for more cucumber. That's what it was. And then he heard me. So he goes, he sticks his fingers in my cucumber water, pulls out cucumber like his hand was a crane and he was grasping something, pulls it out and throws it on my plate. And then he stares me right in the eye. And I went, uh, and I was speechless. I didn't know what to do. I wanted more cucumber. Go back and forth about that cucumber water story all the time, right? <laughs> it just, it's, it will always I like forever. I know, I know. Oh, it's, yeah, and, and again, going back to acting and reacting and how, how you're going to, you know, change the things we can change and the things we cannot change, what are you going to do? I know, right? Nothing Alkalinity, so important keeping the body alkaline because disease cannot live in an alkaline body. And that was key for me at everything natural when we were working there and disease cannot live in an alkaline body. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's, inflammation. there's something- what causes inflammation, all the, uh, the diet thing. And that's for me, I knew I was so sluggish and working out like a fiend and back to what I was saying, diet, I was doing it. I was, I was back to bad eating habits, but anyway, well, here I am. Um, a lot of people like to turn their nose up in the air at the alkaline diet and say, oh, it's a bunch of baloney. It's not true, blah, blah, blah. I feel it is true. Honestly, that's a huge reason why I do fasting and I do time-restricted eating. Your body will go back into homeostasis and it'll, it'll migrate back to an alkaline state. Your body is naturally in an alkaline state. We cause acidity in our system by our diets and our lifestyle habits. Lack of sleep, toxic relationships, toxic people in our life, stress levels through the roof, cortisol spiking over and over again. Cheeseburgers, French fries, processed carbs late at night, uh, popcorn with butter and, and, I don't know, sugar on it, sugar-coated caramel corn, bagfuls of it at night, ice cream at night, cereal at night, these kind of things. All that stuff creates an acidic body. And when you continually eat that stuff and you continually follow these patterns of living day after day after day, your body is always in an acidic state. That is where disease loves to manifest. That is where inflammation loves to manifest. Bad brain function, sleep disturbances, lethargy throughout the day. All this stuff happens by being in an acidic environment in your body. So in order to change all that, you need to flip some switches. And the best way to do that is get rid of the acidic foods, infill, integrate more alkaline foods and beverages. And I say, shrink your eating window down. Do you have anything to add to that? And, and do what, Kevin? What was the last thing? I don't know if you can hear my kitty in the background, but she's she's calling I out. I do hear the kitty. She wants to she wants to get her moment in the sun. I already saw her. That's she's close. Anyway. I know I know how you feel about your cats. I'm not. I have nothing uh, against them. But um, uh, adding to that, alkaline yeah. in the body. Well, my mom, for for an example. I mean, she she developed cancer at the age of 85, and my mom was a recovered alcoholic for a long long time. So I learned a lot of things about uh, the correlation between diet and the body through that because I worked at Marworth along with her. Oh, yeah. uh, the sobriety and people that would cut the alcohol out of their diet and would just crave sweets because the body, yes, very interesting. Interesting, yeah. Yes, yeah, so they would crave the sweets because they weren't getting that sugar anymore in their body. So, um, so that was a real eye opener for me. I watched that a lot. And then my mom, you know, having struggling with that and her, she was highly acidic, even though she had quit, she still had a sugar addiction. And then we honed in on her body and how to eat and how to uh, get her body alkaline again. And we had a, a great year of life again. Although my mom, you know, she knew she had, she had great energy because she was so active and she stayed active most of her life. She didn't, uh, she cl did clean up her diet towards the end there. And she was just, she was doing great. So um, alkalinity in the body is, is huge. And for me, that was a big part too, because I was so inflamed and I had achy joints. So I always, oh, my pain in the neck. You know, all these things are now, I, I don't, they've, they've left me. I just don't have that inflammation like I did. So huge, huge difference. That's awesome. Yes. And, and your parents both lived long, healthy lives. And, they uh, did. 
it was fantastic. Did. They're a really good example of, of, of how age was just a number to them. They didn't, they didn't, they oh. were so active. Like they, they canoed, they danced. I mean, they did it all. The other thing they didn't yeah. do was like box jumps on a 36 inch box, but I wouldn't recommend anybody do that anyway. Although my mom used to, she used to do those that frog pose, you get on your knees or your hands or you get, put your hands on the ground. You ever see the frog pose and she yeah. put her to her elbow and she would do that. Wow. She was awesome. So it was great examples, great teachers. And then, so they're, they're great teachers too. And we always ate well, even though she had a, that sugar thing, but we always, we remember when we. Oh yeah. I, I love the fact that your mom had such a sugar addiction because I never had to worry about there being a lack of like carrot cake or anything else. The, the carrot cake right. you made for your birthday in 2001 or 2002. Oh my God. Yes. Off so, the charts. It was so good. Uh, the icing was like that thick and it had yeah. layers of icing in between. I'm at, yeah. was, wait, was it carrot cake or was it strawberry? It was, was it carrot? No, definitely it was carrot cake. Carrot, right, yeah. Still, yeah, it's still one of my favorites. If, you know, I still have the recipe and I'd oh, love cool. to make it. And yeah, and have that stuff every now and then, you know, it's like, it's, it feeds your soul. So, absolutely, absolutely. Good and memories. I, believe me, I am not against, I am not against sweets at all. People sometimes are shocked when I tell them that I have a massive sweet tooth. Because people say, man, must have been like forever since you had a cupcake or a donut or blah, blah, blah. I go to Whole Foods routinely and I buy their vegan chocolate chip cookies. They're massive. They're like this big and like that thick. Right. And because I do time-restricted eating and, and I stop eating early and I only, I do two, I do two mad. It's, I call it two mad, which means two meals a day generally. And then once a month I do a 48 hour fast. Last week I did a 48 hour fast. It was in my, my time frame. I'm able to have a little bit more sweets here and there. And it doesn't even have a, a minute effect on my body. And as we get closer to summer, I've already started upping my workouts. Like Usually now I do a workout in the morning and then I go for a hike or something afternoon or a walk, even in inclement conditions. And when summer rolls around, it's going to be workout number one, and then it's going to be a bike ride, workout number two, and then it's going to be workout number three in the afternoon. I usually go to three days in the summer because we, we, our summers are so short here, but the weather is so beautiful. I've got to get it while it's here. <laughs> get it while it can. And... Uh-oh, we lost you. Sorry about that. Am I still here? Yep, you're back. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah, I should put it on do not disturb. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I got a call in. But getting back to that too, um, and for you, like you just said, even though you say workout, doing what you do is something that you're so passionate and you love it. It's not like, oh my gosh, I got to go and do that workout. You know, we have a, a fitness center here in town that offers yoga and offers, I mean, there's so many things that are starting to pop up here awesome. in our little. Great, yes. Yeah. So there's so many things to offer people that are going to be passionate about, or they're going to love what they do instead of going out and feel like, oh, I've got to do that. You know, and just feel good about doing what they're doing. So, and there's something for everybody. I always tell people, when you should always plan on feeling better after your workout is over than when you got that when you got to the gym, or if you're working out at home, you should always have a plan in mind, and you always want to feel better when you're finished than when you got there. You shouldn't be in pain. Your hands shouldn't be bleeding. You shouldn't be ripping the skin off your hands by doing 100 burple ups or whatever the. Right, right. Is. Not, not, a, not always quantity, quality. 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 quality reps, quality, quality everything. Intention. Quality always trumps quantity, and intention is the driver of everything. It's where your intention lies that is most important in life with every single thing you have in front yeah. of you from the time you get up until the time you go to bed at night. If your intentions are good, then you never have to worry about any comments anyone ever makes. Because if you know that what you're doing is good and it's the right thing and you're contributing good positive chi to the universe or the atmosphere, that's the only thing that ever matters. Regardless of the feedback you're going to get from anybody, never worry about it. If you know you're doing the right thing, that's all that ever matters. I promise you that. And I know we both have experienced that many, many times over back in Pennsylvania. Critics yeah. and neg negative naysayers and negative Nancys, no pun intended, et cetera. <laughs> But our intention is always in the right place. And as long as that is the case with all of you out there, that's all that ever matters. So just know that. I need a sip of water. Energy, energy follows intention. Exactly. Where energy goes, where, where, how's the saying go? Where energy flows, attention goes, or is it a, where attention goes, energy flows? It doesn't matter. It go either way. But that's the yeah, case. That's good. And that's keep that on. Yeah. So it's a good example of like lack attracts lack, poverty attracts poverty, health attracts health, fitness attracts fitness, happy attracts happy. So if you, if you, if you wake up in the morning and you're happy and you have a good workout and you, you text a couple people and say, have a great day, you're already starting to establish 
positive roots for your day. So I encourage you all to do that every single day. Check in with people. If you have the ability to look someone in the eye when you're grocery shopping, do it. There's so many people walking around like this right now with their arms hunched, their, their shoulders folded forward, creating bad posture because of the coronavirus that is unbelievable. I see them at the store all the time. Gloves, masks, hands on a cart. But they're holding onto their cart like someone's going to rip it out of their hands, and they're walking around like this with round shoulders and their head down. And I'm seeing it's a, all. Yeah, scary. It's a lot of fear. Yeah. And again, to and it is a scary time. It's definitely, but it's exactly what you said. Uh, how much energy we put into it, and the, the the word fear, future events appearing real, future events appearing real. And, and mom wrote that down. I have so many, and I always refer back to her. But there was so many. I live those those cliches but they were words then but now they i live my life that way and so i think the same thing i go into the grocery store and smile and and help where you can and pick up where you can do what we can if we're in this frame of mind you know to help other people that are not right now and for the people that are not reach out to us reach out yeah. to you or, and and we're there you know and we're not all we're not always there but by helping others, we help each other. Yeah, exactly. And that's we a good point, too. So much. So I'm yeah. so glad to do this all the way from Pennsylvania to Utah. I know. Gotta love technology. It's, a, it's our best friend and worst enemy at the same time. I've always said it. And speaking of which, I'm going to make this claim again. I did it last time I did one of these. Mark Zuckerberg, if you're out there listening to me or if you hack my computer or hack this video and you hear me talking because I said your name, please, I beg you again, please bring back the Facebook Live um option where you can do a facebook live with people from different towns different countries it was so seamless and easy it was unbelievable and i woke up one day and it was gone i don't know why it left i don't know where it went please bring it back i'm begging you please bring it back okay. i'm with you i'm with now, you does anybody have any i have my phone over here does anybody have any questions for us we'll, we'll hang around for a couple more minutes and in the meantime i want to tell you um i want to ask you um i ask this of everybody that i talk to friend foe enemy it doesn't matter what is your favorite ice cream and what is your favorite brand? My favorite ice cream? Yes. Montel Dairy. What's that? The Montel Dairy, where I grew up. The Montel Dairy. Oh my gosh, I remember the Montel Dairy. <laughs> yes, that's where I go. And, and my favorite kind would probably be. Um, is that still open? Montel Dairy? Yes. Well, yes, it will be. You know, to, oh, oh, yeah, it's still open. and. Wow. The owner was still up to last year. That's what was my, my, so yeah, I love them. In fact, that's my first ride on my motorcycle every year. I go to Montel Dairy to have usually something with peanut butter in it, like peanut butter ripple. So, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. At, least, at least it's not just plain boring vanilla. No. Not never. that I'm judging any of you out there with the, who love <laughs> vanilla ice cream. I'm not judging. That's, it, that's why there's chocolate and vanilla. Something <laughs> for everybody. Exactly. I, I just use vanilla as an adjective sometimes when I'm describing a situation. I'm like, that's very vanilla. I'm like, you can do better than that. Oh, I did that all the time too with dance. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about dance one more time. What, what is your current, all right, let's say Sam's coronavirus. What was happening in your dance, your dance world and your, as a, like, as a, as a, an instructor and so on, what was like the, the latest thing that was happening? Was there, um, did you still have a steady crowd at like country line dancing? Did you see a spike in it? Did you um, aspire to do something, take it to another level? Did you, did you want to like make new dances or anything like that? What, what, what was going through your mind about it recently? Uh, we still had that, we had a steady crowd and it was fun. And again, the big, the community, community oriented thing, it was wonderful. Um, we're trying to introduce more of it. I want to introduce more couples, okay. couples thing. And that's what I did at the, on the cruise. And then I broke my wrist, so couldn't do that and heal so much better from that. Excellent, excellent. So incorporating another, a lot of fitness places and things in this area, starting to incorporate that into our lifestyles here, which is awesome. Rad. So, so yes. Actually, I do. You actually just triggered something in my head I want to come back to before we call it a day. And you were talking, yeah. you, you, you kept referring to the couples thing. And I refer to that a lot too. And the importance of good human connection and relationships and how um, like exercising with your significant other is so magical and dancing is so magical and, and, and like partner yoga and this type of thing. And there's, there's a couple of reasons why I say this. When I was going to the gym, I, I would see certain couples that were together. They come to the gym together. They'd be happy. They'd be smiling. 
and they like li like wink at each other across the floor. Sometimes they'd work out together, sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes they do two completely different workouts, but then they walk past each other and they they like you could tell they were a couple in a thing, and they would just be glowing. Like the happiness inside their relationship was off the charts. Then you've got dancing, where you have kind of that same effect going on, but you're actually in contact with them. So physical contact. There's been so many studies and research done on it. It's not even funny, the power of it. That's why massages are so therapeutic for you. It's not necessarily because you're getting toxicities worked out of your, your body and you're getting knots released. It's because of the hands on the body. There's a lot of energy that we have. We're, we're walking particles of energy. We're balls of energy walking this earth. And we collect more from the ground, especially if you're barefoot. And we have a way to transfer that from body to body. So if you're doing partners dancing and you're holding hands or your hand is on someone's shoulder, you're transferring all these, these ions back and forth together, which will help improve your mood, which will help improve your relationship. You're making eye contact, you're smiling, and you're really gonna get connected. Partner yoga is the same thing. There's, there's two people involved. There's a base and a flyer. And the base is the person, usually the guy who lies on the ground and holds the, the woman up as she does all the moves and stuff like that. She was called the flyer, he was called the base. So you're in contact with them and, and she has to rely 100% on you to hold her up there or she's gonna do a face dive. So there's a trust, a trust factor involved as well. So I don't think these aspects are talked about enough. And you obviously know them because you're talking about them. You keep coming back to them. So you're trying to enforce kind of like the whole, the whole couples thing. Is that it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get that direction of guys and girls dancing together in places that I've gone and other, to, to have that connection. It's so important to have, to do it, to try to get, past those barriers that we feel so awkward about because yeah. I was that person. I, I was that girl, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so awkward in front of a group of people. And um, so to break those barriers. So yeah, I keep going through it because it's, it's difficult. A lot of times it's easy to get the ladies on the floor, but to get the guys and, and bring them out there and, and just to try this and just have fun with it. And I always feel like I'm the referee in it and all, but that's great. So those cross body patterns, doing something you're passionate about, the crossing the linear point, the middle point in your body, like we had talked about, that biohacking for the brain, uh -huh. that biohacking for, for um, keep reversing age or keeping ourselves well at, at this age, whatever age it may be. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. important. Well, that crossing the middle point. So we talked a lot about but not everybody's able to do the amount of movement we do, but any movement, something isn't always very much, but more than often, something's more than nothing. Absolutely. So something, anything, walk, like you said, all that. And, and what it does, especially in this time at any time, but now just to have that positive, get away from the TV, go outside and really breathe. And I'm seeing this with families, families I haven't seen forever walking our road and here they are out, out and about and walking and connecting again. So that's great. And, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right, what, what a perfect way to close because you know, yeah. life's a dance and you learn as you go. And, and a matter of fact, I was serial watching and listening to YouTube last night before I went to bed of all the songs we used to dance to back in the day. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't remember this one. I don't remember this one. And I had to watch oh. a, 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 um, I had to watch an instructional video of the Sweetheart, Sweetheart Shottish. And I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. Then it all came back to me, the three step scuff, three step scuff, and then the forward and the backwards. And then I just like, it all just started clicking back to me, like all how much fun we used to have back in the day. Like the, a song, come on, and everyone just like jumps up and like runs to the dance floor and grabs a partner and boom, off they went to the races. It was such a, like a fast paced environment. It went from like zero to 60 really quickly. And I was trying to think of all these different, I was listening to like Fever and Watermelon Crawl and all these different songs. And I'm like, man, I, I don't remember a single dance step of any of these, but it was just so much fun. And I, I think I'm gonna write a list of like 10 tunes from back in the day. And I'm gonna try to hunt them down on YouTube and I wanna relearn them just for fun. I, I I'm, would quarantined. Love to... I'm quarantined, <laughs> so why not? <laughs> right, right. Good. And, and another thing to do cross body and just have fun. Just to have fun. Yeah. That's what we need. We need fun. We got to exactly. keep fun in our lives. Now more than ever before, we need fun. And now more than ever before, we need cross body patterns. And, and the whole cross body pattern thing is whenever you're doing a movement or an exercise that crosses the midline of your body and you're working like both sides of your body at the same time in a directional or diagonal you fire up a ton of neurons in the brain. We've talked about this earlier a bunch of times, but we didn't really clarify exactly what we're talking about. So the cross body aspect is super beneficial for brain function and it keeps your brain firing in all cylinders. And it's one of the ways to biohack your brain to help reverse the aging process to keep your brain fresh because it will, it will, it will likely help reverse um, dementia and then all the brain related 
diseases that occur as we age. Like your parents were as sharp as a razor blade, right? The they were passed away. so sharp, absolutely. And they danced all the time and they like, out, they're out mother nature and they're gardening. Your mom was an amazing cook and she, she plucked things off the, out of the garden and bring it in and prepare food. And it was just like, you know, I keep coming back to them because they're, they're such a perfect example of, of how to age gracefully. And, and yeah. everyone's just like, sometimes they turn 40 and they're like, oh, that's it. I'm just going to start taking medications and have back pain and have rounded shoulders. I don't care. Oh, I'm 40. So blah, blah, blah. I'm like, when I went back to PA last year, I was shocked. All my friends are like, oh, I'm 40 now. So, you know, I'm getting old and blah. And like, they're so negative, rounded shoulders. And I'm like, what the, are you serious? I'm like, I'm just getting warmed up. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yep. And stay warmed up and stay doing what you're doing. And it increases my positive chi on this end of the world. And we had talked about getting together and doing something out there. And I know. here we are, you know, then, yeah. Well, at least, we're able to, at least we're able to see each other through technology. Otherwise you would be coming out here in May, but it is what it is. Yep. And I think, I feel that possibly we should do recap and do something a little bit more about feeding our temple and just what those things are, just the, the gut yeah. health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brain health. Absolutely. Food, food is a medicine. Hippocrates said it years and years and years ago. What did he say? He said, about food is my medicine and medicine is thy food. Because food was the first medicine before um, allopathic medicine occurred. And then before it got all twisted and conceptualized by the pharmaceutical industries over the years and twisted right. out of proportion, food was all you had. It's all you got. There were no factories that made um, medications for high blood pressure and cholesterol and cancer and all those other things because most of those conditions didn't even exist. But those that did, there was no, there was no pharmacy to go down the street. There were no cars. There, were no, there wasn't even a little horse and buggy, I don't think, then. They were like, holy crap, let's, let's put these herbs and berries together. And Hippocrates and Socrates and all these people. Native Americans. Yeah, Native, Native Americans. Native. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ayurveda and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the, the, the derivatives of all that stuff. They had to figure it out with berries and herbs and leaves and roots and things like that. And they made, they made out just fine. So if it worked for them, why can't it work for us? It can because your body's first defense is it understands food better than it understands uh, Anything. some kind of pill with gelatin in it and, and high fructose corn syrup and FDNC red leg number four to give it coloring. It doesn't understand that. It understands right. ashtagandha and it understands um, shizandra root and it understands maca and it understands pine pollen because it's natural stuff that you can pluck off a tree or rip out of the ground. Right. So it's true. We're going to keep it up. Keeping it up. Yeah. We'll come back. We'll come back and do another one of these and we're going to go down that rabbit hole. And with that I, being case, I know, especially at any time, keep our well full and what those things are that we put in our well to do that. Let's do that. Sounds great. Any, All final, right. any final words from Northeast PA? What one thing can I do today to enhance my quality of life? And thank you, Kev. You know, I love, love you. you. I love you too. Thank and thank you. Thank you for talking smack with me today. We went well over an hour, I think, and I try to keep these an hour or less, but it's okay because if we have good stuff to talk about, we can't stop momentum. Keep the momentum going, people. Stay positive. Keep your chin up. You're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Yes, we're in it together. We're, we're always in it. People are using this hashtag. We're in it together. I'm like, we're always in it together. I've been saying that way before the coronavirus. We're always in it together. Always right. think positive. Always live in the present moment. Always do at least one good deed a day without having any expectation of anything in return. Try to get at least eight hugs a day and always pick up at least one piece of trash. You do that and you're going to be just fine. I promise you. Till next time, this is K Rail reporting live from the wild, wild west, baby. Bye, Nance. <laughs> See you soon. Okay. Thanks. Bye.